So today I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial with a new palette from Sugar Hill called Oh Honey. It just launched today and it's a collaboration with Trixie Mattel, one of my favorite drag queens who, this is going to be like a game of telephone. Amy once told me that Trixie told her that I was her favorite OG YouTuber. So I just, I feel very special and you know, wanted to share that rumor with you guys. Uh, this little, I'm just going to show you guys the packaging really quick. Um, it's called Oh Honey. Uh, it's a palette that has both blush and eyeshadow, six eyeshadows, one amazing watermelon colored blush. Oh, hi, how you doing? Super excited to play around with that. And then there's a lip color that is supposedly honeysuckle scented, so I'm really excited. Ooh. Very excited to play around with this today and see what I come up with with a look for this. I don't really have a plan. I'm just gonna kind of go at it. <laughs> My face, I brought down a bunch of brushes. I've got this big old bucket of like supplemental products to play around with. You guys might notice that our background's a little bit different today. I am testing out some new, um, like a new filming setup and whatnot. So kind of excited to share this with you guys today. I'm gonna zoom the camera in so you guys can see what I'm doing while I apply my makeup and let's go ahead and get started. Yes, okay. So first things first, I need to get some primer on my face. I already have moisturizer on and all that jazz. Today for primer, since I wanna go for like a mattified kind of look, I'm gonna be using the Veil Primer from Hourglass love this stuff it's like insanely smoothing and it's got, even got sunscreen in it it's one of my og faves i love it it's just a product that's expensive but it's worth it, it does give a whitish cast to the skin like that's cute that's why we're gonna cover it up with some full coverage foundation so for my actual foundation today i'm gonna be also using an hourglass product this is their stick foundation in the shade porcelain um mine looks disgusting well, I shouldn't show that on camera, but you know, it's real life. I really use this product. When it comes to this foundation, I find that it's best to kind of like work in a smaller section. So um, I will actually sometimes do this kind of thing where I just sort of dot it in like little triangles because it looks cute <laughs> and it applies just the right amount of product right where I need it. Can we talk about this situation? What the ever living F? I hate it. I'm gonna be using a beauty blender. This is a very old one. It's lost most of its color. It's got rips in it, but you know what? It still works. So here we go. I'm going to work this into the skin by actually pressing it in like this, not swiping. Because if you swipe, you're gonna actually wipe off your foundation. And it's good for like if you need to spread it. So like for instance, if it's not over a large enough area, I'll kind of do like a flicking motion to kind of move the product around a little bit, like there. But for the most part, the most effective way to use this foundation. Uh, with a beauty blender is to just press it in. Sometimes I kind of rub it around like that to spread it. So I have a kind of an interesting lighting setup today. I have natural light from my window on this side and artificial light from this side. And I feel like this one's a lot harsher. I don't know. I just turned half the lights on this side off and I feel like it's a little bit more even between it's still now it's like really bright from the window side but I kind of almost prefer that because it's the natch the natural light because the bangs I'm not usually a big fan of putting foundation up here but because like look at how red my forehead is this is a result of having a migraine and vomiting like the older I get the worse it gets and I get actual bumps now too it's like red bumps hot gross not a fan so Pounce that shit in. On like an average day, I probably wouldn't put any makeup up here at all. But with the broken capillaries and whatnot, I just, I feel, I feel the need to have a little extra something, something going on up there. For my concealer today, I'm going to be, I'm actually going to be applying a bunch of eyeshadows and stuff, so I don't even know why I'm bothering. Perhaps because I like to make my life difficult. So I'm not going to apply this all the way up to the eye line because I'm going to have all kinds of shadows, but I'm going to put this right here where I have this bluish tone, this um, lovely, lovely dark circle situation. This is a very peachy toned concealer. This is the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer in the shade Creme Brulee. It's a very peachy toned color. It works really well for me for the under eye area, not so much all over my face. And then I'll take my Beauty Blender. 
and it'll kind of get smudged up towards the lash line but I'm not going to apply product all the way up there because that's just way 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 too much to balance out my sallow tone that I get in this kind of region it's very yellow I'm taking MAC prep and prime uh, brighten it's a highlighter <laughs> um, in the shade radiant rose this is similar to a product like Touche Claw from uh, Issa Laurent that's super bright light. It's like really, really washing that out. So I don't know if you guys can see how that is truly taking over and taking out that sallow tone. I also will like to use this sometimes right here in that hollow space that I get from, you know, being fat. So I get these like really kind of chunky puffy eyes, which sleep can never help. It's just the nature of my face. So I'll put a little bit of the highlighter there and it just minimizes the appearance. So since we are using a Drag Queen's palette, I think that we should at least moderately bake today. So I'm gonna use a combination of two different powders. I like this one from RCMA, but I also really love this Cameo powder from Ben Nye. What I do is I get a little metal dish like this, shake out a little bit of one, way too much. <laughs> shake out a bit of the other, and I will like mix up, I'll mix up way too much on purpose or because I shook out too much product. Here we go. Powder, meat face. So I'm not a big fan of like applying like loads of powder because that just never works for me because I have drier skin. But this is still a lot of powder for me. So we're still, oh shoot. I was gonna do cream contour today. Well, I guess I'm not. So the reason I mix these two powders is because the, um, the RC May one is just plain white that it can look a little um, pasty on my paleness. Whereas the Cameo powder has a pinkish, peachish tint to it, which can be too peach if I use it alone. So I kind of, you know, I'm like Goldilocks over here. I've got issues. Okay, so now that we have caked up that face, let's do some eyeshadow. I'm gonna bust out the tape today. We're gonna go old school YouTube tutorial. Um, this used to be one of my absolute favorite methods and I just kind of fell out of it. I know I don't use like, do a lot of like lady drag anymore so i think that's part of it i am going to very carefully place this in my outer corner and whenever you use scotch tape like this it's really important that when you before you apply it to your face you apply it to your the back of your hand or just somewhere else to get it a little less sticky uh so that when you put it on your face it's not like hardcore stuck on there to the point where it actually hurts to remove I hope those are even. I really don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's go in with some eyeshadow primer. I'm going to be using Max Painterly Paint Pot today, one of my favorite OG um, eyeshadow primers. It's got a nice, like, neutral base to it, which really helps to eliminate all of, like, the redness and freckles and stuff like that I have on my eyelids. I am using considerably less of this than I used to use in the past. Like, I used to pack this shit on, and I've learned that it works better if you use less. So that's exactly what I'm doing today, and I'm applying that right up to the line of the tape. So starting out with a little tiny angled brush, I'm going to use Pony Boy. Oh my bob. Is this named after The Outsiders? Because that happens to be one of my favorite books. Um, oh. I don't even know what I'm doing. I like went to go do something and I'm like, I don't even, I don't even know what I'm going to do. We're going to cut the crease. I feel like that's appropriate. I'm going to take that up a bit towards the inner part to carve out a little bit more lid space for myself. So those don't match at all. <laughs> it's been, it's been a while guys. Next I'm going to take this freaking awesome rust color called Romy. As in Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. Please say it's true. I'm gonna pack that on above Pony Boy. Ooh, yes. Packing and patting that all the way across the lid with a nice dense breath. <laughs> Packing that all the way across the lid with a nice dense synthetic brush. You know what guys, I just, I feel like it's that kind of day. I'm going to take Side Saddle, which is kind of like a yellowy brown. And I'm going to use it as my freaking highlight because you know what? Why the hell not? Just crust that right under my brow bone and bring it on home to the outer edge. Ooh, yes. I'm going to go back in with Romy because she got a little lost in the mix. 
to use a white eyeshadow base. This one is from LA Girl. What I'm gonna do to apply this eyeshadow base is I'm gonna actually paint it on a synthetic filbert cut brush, meaning like a round sh shader brush. Hello, focus. Thank you. <laughs> Talking to my camera like it's a bitch. And then use that to apply the white base all over my lid. Do we wanna carve that crease out? I think we do. So I want the edge of my pony boy sharp. So I'm going to take this little synthetic brush. And I mentioned when something's synthetic, just because it lays down product a little bit differently than a natural brush. I find that natural brushes tend to diffuse more, whereas synthetics um, will lay product down a little more um, opaque, a little more intense. And then once I have kind of reinforced Pony Boy, I'll go over it again with the cream. So now we're gonna do a combination. We're gonna start out with All Star. Beautiful shimmery duochrome gold. And I'm gonna apply that about a third of the way over. Next, I'm gonna take Dolly, which is the lighter pink, and put that in the middle of the lid. Not cleaning off the brush, there's like a little bit of the All Star still on it and I know that all star is meant to represent drag race but I'm a big fan of Smash Mouth and that's all I can think about is all that glitters is gold I'm gonna pick up another clean brush to put into oh honey because I don't want to put any of these other colors in the lightest shade of the palette and I'm gonna pack that shit on the inner part here and we need to have a conversation about how intense this eyeshadow is Ooh. It is frickin' gorge. Shall we remove the tape and see if this is a hot mess or if it's actually even? Taking a little bit of this um, MAC Spiked Shape and Brow Tint. It's a really cool product. I think I might have talked about this in a video before. Um, on one end, it's powder. It has like a little twist off. So you can use that to like fill in the sparse areas or like my brows, especially after I've done all this like foundation and stuff, they take on a really light tint. So something like this is great to just kind of get some color going all throughout. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I have brows again. Uh, and then on the other side, there's a pen side. And this is really great for doing like the hair stroke thing. And also for like tinting the brows generally. It's like I have some stubborn little white guys in there that need to... Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. I wasn't gonna extend the brow, but like, okay, I have to zoom in so you guys can really see. Do you see that like whisper thin line? <sighs> All right, guys. So for my eyeliner today, this is a little tough to explain in a tutorial fashion because it was a lot of just intuition and just sort of drawing on what felt right. So I'm just gonna narrate it rather than like super tutorialize it. You can see there, I, I started out with kind of like a line that was sort of crisp um, as like my baseline. I used a combination of two different eyeliners. I used a pen style eyeliner just for the simple convenience of it to just sort of map out the general shape. And then to make it opaque and thicker and just generally more awesome, I used a liner from a brand called The Balm. Um, it's called Schwing, and um, I don't know why I'm making this so weird. I'm like, I used an eyeliner from a brand called The Balm. I don't know why I'm being weird. Uh, it's a very matte, opaque, very, very dark black. And I like this eyeliner mostly because it is not water resistant. It's very easy to remove. So if you make a boo-boo, you can go in and fix it. Now, I chose not to do that. I chose to just keep on building it, making it thicker and thicker, because this is drag makeup. Um, I ended up taking that wing all the, almost all the way to the hairline. I like sort of feathering out my wings at the edge. I find that that works the best for me when I do something that's completely super bold and crisp. That can be fun too, but occasionally on my pale skin, it'll look stark. So by feathering that line at the edge, it actually makes it have the effect that I want it to have, which is where it just like wisps out to nothing. 
Trixie's eyeliner is a little bit thicker and more I would describe it as wedge like or more triangular whereas mine is a, quite a bit more curvy it's just about going for what works for you and I love the sensuality of a curvy liner Now this is a part that didn't get shown very well I used a cream eyeshadow base this is the same one I used on my upper eyelid I used it much more pigmented on the bottom um, and created my little uh, like triangular highlight on the bottom or whatever you want to call it you know Trixie's signature look I then took the Schwing liner, which I didn't mention is sort of like a paint, like a paintbrush style. It has like a very fine tipped felt tip applicator. Uh, this probably wasn't the best method. I probably should have used an actual makeup brush and some face paint or something like that it would have been easier and smoother. But I was, you know, I was just kind of playing around. So it's not that it's not the end of the world. It's going to look good in the end. And that's all that really matters, right? Now, unfortunately, for some reason, when I packed Oh Honey over the white eyeshadow base, it didn't show much. I took a little bit of um, show, or not that it didn't show much, I like was out of frame. So I put on a little bit of Pony Boy and then I blended it out. I'm going to repeat myself on this in a minute, so I'm not going to go into it too deeply, but basically use the, the brown shadows in the palette to create a shadow underneath that bottom line. I'm going to take a pencil brush and apply a bit of Romy just right here where the lashes are going to go. And it's a little, it's a little choppy. It's a little, it's a little funky just yet. I'm gonna blend it out. The just you know generic blender that I have laying around. Trixie does this really fun shaped um, blush, and I'm gonna attempt to do like a version of that. It is a deep contour, and I'm using a um, an angled powder brush from Smashbox for this. And I'm going to use this tight little angle that it has on one side. The blush is called Life Size. I'm using a larger than life <laughs> powder brush. It's just so full of the color. Oh. I kind of feel like maybe if I put tape on, it might help. Maybe that's why it comes out all clean. and do it again with the contour okay so what I ended up doing here was sort of using like a smudgy blending technique where I just kind of rub it into the skin felt a little weird I'm not gonna lie um, use the that darker contour from it cosmetics yet again and then picked up a little bit of the blush oh my gosh that's this blush is so pretty it's so much fun it's very vivid using the matte highlight from the it cosmetics palette I'm gonna play that right here to make that little cheek pop I'm afraid this is not doing her justice we've got like a tape line underneath so for my lashes today of course I'm going to use sugar pill they're kind of deciding between two different lashes this is heiress and this is plush so plush like that on the bottom <gasps> Ooh. okay I think decision might have just been made but this is Eris on the bottom <sighs> you know we're going with this there's already glue on it so it's like sticking a little bit so maybe I won't even put more glue on maybe I'll just leave it Leave her to her own devices. Where'd my lash glue go? I feel like that could be the name of my YouTube channel. Just where did my lash glue go? Because every time I do a makeup tutorial where I use false lashes, somehow I always lose the glue on my desk. I don't know what that's about. God, that's just pissing me off. This side didn't come out as good. I gotta like put my hair over it, like <laughs> cover up the mess. This is fun. Oh my gosh. So much fun. This one not blending is driving me crazy. So I put some foundation on. want a little bit of highlight like I already have a little bit of shiny highlight but I want some gold 
So I'm going to use this one from Makeup Forever. Um, it's H106 with a fan brush. Just make it up as obnoxious as humanly possible. That definitely helps. Like having it a little darker over here helps me see that like actually there is quite a lot but it was being really washed out by the window. So good to know. I need to do mascara. This is a new mascara I just picked up from Sephora during the VIB sale. I got like two things which were birthday presents for myself. So I can't get into them until later this month. But this one I let myself bust into. This is called Lash Craft. Um, and it just, it sounded witchy. So I was into it. Sugar pull lashes are actually kind of like black brown. Which I prefer, but I'm putting a little bit of mascara in them to make them black black. Couple little tweaks I want to do to the eyeshadow. I'm going to take Dolly on a fluffy paddle style brush and I'm gonna brush that just above where we had our crease shades, like the inner eyebrow corner. Just give it a little light as you move. Blend it well. I tried to capture this for you guys, but unfortunately the, the lashes are kind of in the way and just stopping you from seeing what I'm doing. But I'm enhancing that inner corner, basically extending my winged liner down a bit further. It's a little wonky and um, shaky at first, but I did clean it up by the end of the video. Okay. Ooh, that is bubblegum pink. Yes. Of course my lips are like super dry. <laughs> is this a different one than the other sugar pill? I can't tell. The Sugar Pill Liquid Lipstick Formula for me is a very thin, very liquidy one. And I tend to like to layer this up. So I'm gonna do an initial layer, just kind of get the color more or less laid over my lips. I do love the, um, the formulation and the shape of the wand. Make it really easy to get that beautiful, curvaceous lip look. Um, you know, some lip liquid lipsticks lend themselves better to a super, super sharp, um, like razor point uh, cupid's bow and some are easier to get a rounded look and this is definitely one that's easier to get that rounded look which is perfect for the Trixie Mattel look. I didn't quite go that far outside my lip line. I wanted it to be comfortable and something that I would genuinely wear and I tend to not really go too far outside my lip borders. It's just not my personal taste but of course honey do what is right for you and what feels good in the moment. All right guys, so this is the finished look and I had a blast doing this. I think it's quite clear that I am over the moon with how this turned out. So I, I've i never tried to recreate Trixie's makeup. I've been a fan for years, never tried to even recreate it because I thought like that's unapproachable. Um, and I will say like I'm a little out of practice. So this was a little bit challenging. This is not garden variety makeup, um, this is very elevated and I don't think that I did it exactly as Trixie does that I did kind of did my own take of it. Um, I always really like doing this kind of shape because it really enhances the shape of my face and makes it a little more like heart shaped. Um, and having these little wings that come out just kind of give me a little face lift if you know what I mean. Um, I had so much fun. Thank you so much to Sugar Pill for sending me this collection. This is awesome. Trixie, congratulations. This is a awesome awesome collection. It was a lot of fun to play with. Obviously I went for broke <laughs> with this. I just like kind of went for it. But this is such a great palette that you could really use at, you know for your neutral everyday life um, if you so chose but you can also elevate it and like make it crazy. Um, I think my favorite two eyeshadows in here three. I'm going to say three that are my favorite. Of course, they're not going to be available individually. It's only available in this palette, but like just bear with me here. Um, oh Honey is just one of those perfect eyeshadows. It's incredibly pigmented, smooth, beautiful texture. It's just, mwah. there was like an, you know, an eyeshadow Oscar, they would win it. Um, to me, Dolly and All Star are like if kitten eyeshadow from Sugar Pill like had a psychotic break and a split personality because uh, Dolly is like the lighter version of Kitten and All Star is like its deeper cousin. So it's kind of like the shy guy and then like the little, the little Hellcat version. I love this look. I love the palette. I love you guys. So let me know what you guys think of this video in the comment section down below. I know it's been a long time since I've done a crazy ass tutorial like this. I know you guys have noticed that I don't do as many tutorials anymore and I'm going to be vulnerable with you guys for a moment and just state the truth which is that my makeup videos don't get as many views so if you want to see me do more stuff like this 
I need your help. I need you guys to comment on this video. I need you to rate this video. I need you to share it with your friends. I need you to just kind of reciprocate. I need you to be there for me as I'm being there for you. Um, because really makeup tutorials are one of my favorite things to do. They are so much fun. Um, and the lack of tutorials is not about a lack of love of makeup or um, not wanting to do it or being blocked creatively like I have so many ideas in fact I'm constantly using my face charts um, and drawing things and coming up with really fun stuff to do and I play with makeup on my own quite often um, but when you put your heart and soul into your art and then it doesn't perform very well uh, it's really kind of um, it's really disheartening, really tough to deal with for me as a sensitive soul. Um, and so if you wanna see this, let me know, like vote with your with your views. So next time I put up a makeup tutorial, make sure to watch it, share it, blah, blah, blah. It really does help us creators out. And that's pretty much all I wanna say. Um, don't wanna like guilt trip you guys into watching my videos if you're not really into it. But if you are really into it, I want you guys to know that some of us who make makeup tutorials are struggling. Like there's this disconnect between people saying, I wanna see tutorials, and what people actually watch so in order to continue to make tutorials and make make up a huge part of my channel you know I need to know this is content you want to see so that's pretty much it I hope that you're having a great day thank you so much for watching I know that I might be vintage or tacky definitely a little bit of both but you just be your own kind of beautiful I'll see you guys in my next video see you bye